Hey guys, in this quick tip, I'll go through some of my best practices with Sheet Metal and Fusion 360. So let's jump into the Sheet Metal workspace. I know many of you are going to want to start by creating a sketch, but stop. Instead, we are going to use rule number one, which is to create a new component first. Here we can select which Sheet Metal rules to use for this component. You can use different Sheet Metal rules for each Sheet Metal component. Also notice the Sheet Metal component and Activate checkboxes are selected. Now that the base component is activated, I'll start sketching out my open profile. Notice I didn't close my profile to get the shaded region. Let's jump into the single flange command. When I select an open profile, I can pull out a sheet metal flange based on the contour. Now before we start designing more, let's create a flat pattern. This will require us to select the stationary face. The flat pattern will be created, which will have the correct lengths of the component using the specified K factor, which was specified in the sheet metal rule. Let's exit the flat pattern and start designing a new sheet metal component. First, let's activate the top level of this design and create a new sheet metal component. It is best practice for each sheet metal body to be in its own component because a sheet metal component can have only one flat pattern. So let's create a new sheet metal component. Traditional desktop CAD tools had multi-body sheet metal parts because they had different file types for both parts and assembly files. In Fusion 360, sketches, bodies, components, and assemblies all live within the same design. Now let's continue. For the second sheet metal component, we will start by sketching out a complete rectangle. This time, when we select the flange command, Fusion 360 will automatically use a base flange at the thickness specified in the sheet metal rule. Next, let's select these outside edges. Fusion 360 will automatically switch to an edge flange when edges are selected. Notice I selected the lower edge, but I actually want these flanges to go upward. Simply click the flip option and we can start to drag the flange upward. Don't worry, the length of the flange is still driven off the height datum which is specified in the flange dialog. Now if we examine the flanges further, we will notice there is some interference with our first sheet metal component. We can address this intersection by switching the bend position. In this case, using the adjacent bend location will prevent the interference of this component. Now I don't want these two outside flanges to go the full length of the edge. Notice in the dialog I get an item for every selected edge. Let's switch this edge to two side. We can use the arrows to determine how far this flange goes along the edge. Using two sides starts the measurement from the center of the selected edge. In contrast, for edge 1 we will use the two offset. This will start the measurement from the outside of the selected edge. Use whichever technique to meet your design intent. Let's flatten this second sheet metal component. Notice in this outside casing component we do not have a flat pattern associated with the component yet. Once we use the create flat pattern command, a flat pattern will be generated for this component. Let's add one last flange. We will select these top three edges and notice that these flanges are automatically mitered. If you would not prefer to miter, uncheck the miter option. Now that we have made a design change to the sheet metal component, a warning symbol is placed over the flat pattern for this component. Once we activate the flat pattern, it will be updated. We don't automatically update the flat pattern every command because this would significantly slow down the performance while designing. Well, that wasn't just one tip, but several of my favorites while designing sheet metal components in Fusion 360.